friends welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat West Bengal India this is a hypermature morgagnian cataract with faecolytic glaucoma the patient presented to us with intraocular pressure of 60 millimeter of mercury with anti glaucoma medications and intravenous mannitol the pressure came down to 36 millimeter of mercury and I have taken out the case for surgery. By this time the main incision and two side boards have been made and now an air bubble is being injected. We can see some turbid fluid in the anterior chamber while we inject the air bubble and now tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule of this hypermature morgagnian cataract. In such cases the jonular fibers is usually weak. We can make out the strength of the jonular fibers during capsulorexis. The capsule has been nicely stained and now Visco, in this case it is 2% SPMC, is injected to fill off the anterior chamber. And now, a 26 gauge bent needle is taken. The anterior capsule is punctured. And you can see the milky fluid, but milky fluid didn't come out like a gush. That is because the lot of milky fluid has already come out through the capsule and the patient has suffered this attack of glaucoma for almost one week. And the patient was being treated elsewhere and the patient has come to us today. And now I'm aspirating some milky fluid through the incision in hypermature morgagnian cataract we need not do a minirexis to aspirate the milky fluid but in intumescent cataracts we must do a minirexis intumescent cataracts are dangerous as soon as we make a puncture it can cause Argentine flag sign. But hypermature Morgagnian cataracts are not like that. Milky fluid will come out like a gush and through that incision without doing many rexes, we can aspirate the milky fluid. And in this case my plan is to do a uh, rexes of about 5 millimeter because if I plan a large rexes I may go into the area of insertions of jonular fibers and if the jonular fibers are pulled already weak jonular fibers may give way there can be dialysis of the jonule. So this has been a very satisfactory erexis of about 5 to 5.5 millimeter and now how to manage this nucleus in this case in this video my aim is to find out and to show the safest way to manage this nucleus and let us see how we can do that first with bevel down I make a track through the substance of the nucleus go near the opposite equator and hook the equator and make a nice crack and now in this case my plan is not dividing the nucleus into pieces my plan is this to tilt the nucleus and start eating the pie because the equator which is s resting on the 
posterior capsule is actually protecting the posterior capsule it will not allow the posterior capsule to come forward so I want to do it this by it this heart nucleus in this way just munch it bit by bit here it becomes upside down but I again I tilt it and I start eating it up I am using about 80% ultrasonic energy vacuum is 400 millimeter of mercury flow rate is 40 ml per minute and bit by bit taking small portions of the big chunk and eating it up and this is real time till now no not edited at all and now my plan is to implant the nuclear implant the intraocular lens first and then emulsify the last portion of the nucleus probably this is the last bit I am emulsifying let us see yes now I want to inject some visco because if I don't inject visco this nucleus will come up and it will hit the corneal endothelium so I inject visco over and all around this nuclear piece and then come out and the piece doesn't come up it comes up little bit doesn't touch the corneal endothelium and now I inject some more visco the piece goes towards 6 o'clock and then here is a hydrophilic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens going into the capsular bag the leading haptic has gone into the capsular bag and here it is the trailing haptic is going yes it has gone into the capsular bag and now my plan is to yes I'm pushing it down my plan is to emulsify this portion of the nucleus at the iris plane so in this video I'm taking care of the corneal endothelium taking care of the posterior capsule the posterior capsule has been taken care of by the lens nucleus itself emulsifying the nucleus in tilted position and now the last bit is being emulsified with IOL as scaffold and it is done there's a small piece of nucleus at the side port I have to remove that first so I inject some visco then inject visco through the side port and as I depress the posterior leaf of the main wound this small nuclear piece comes out through the main incision and now the surgery is done we just have to remove the visco I'm using a 23 G Simco cannula to remove the visco at this moment and now I'm using bimanual irrigation aspiration there is little bit of cortical fibers here at 2 o'clock I remove that and now I irrigate the capsular bag because there is always some retained visco behind the intraocular lens so unless we irrigate the capsular bag that visco doesn't come out 
and now irrigation and aspiration are being used together to remove the last portion of visco from the anterior chamber and in this case the last step is this I want to inject triamcinolone acetate underneath this air bubble and do the final wash because we have seen that this eyes develop a lot of anterior chamber reaction on the next post-op day. If we inject trimsonal acetate and remove it, aspirate it, few particles of trimsonal acetate that remains controls the inflammation very well the next day. The next day we get almost clear cornea and a very quiet anterior chamber. So this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is formed very nicely like this and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. You will get some idea to do such cases very safely protecting both the posterior capsule as well as the corneal endothelium and help your patients. Thank you very much for your attention once again.